Dr. Katya, specialist orthodontist from CCC Smiles. And today we have Daisy here in the chair. Daisy can say hi. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna put an expander for Daisy with two bands on 1626. So she's coming this morning to actually get something called separators put in uh, between her upper 1-6 and 2-6. So she doesn't have sevens erupted yet, so we're gonna put it on the mesial contact. Uh, you have to have spaces of at least a few hours before or, or, or a few days before to allow the expander to sit. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing the separator. One is just looping over uh, long stranded floss. I love this method because you can control the stretch of the spacer. It doesn't have to stretch too much. The other option is you could do is um, separating plier. So you can actually put the donut here and then separate it. But as you can see, this can really stretch the rubber band and it can actually even break it sometimes. So they become, they lose their elasticity. So I actually love the floss method because you just can't stretch it too much. So we're going to show you how we're putting it in the mouth. So we've got this contact here. Can you see it? Well, let's get the light here. So we've got the, the contact, we've already put one spacer, if you can see, on the 2.6 mesial, and we're going to put it here now. And it's just a gentle guiding motion, left to, you know, buckle lingually, and you need to make sure that it goes down into the contact point and there's a little click. Then you remove this floss threads, but make sure there is a bit of blue on top of the marginal ridges. So it's not like never ever wedge the entire spacer under the contact. A lot of spacers are, or separators are radio opaque. Uh, if they swallow them accidentally, have a, have a rest Daisy. If they swallow them accidentally, that's okay. And she's off now. Just make sure they don't have chewy or very hard foods that can pull them out. Um, and she'll come back this afternoon to get her expander.